Okay, I thought it'd be wise to film to, um, what day is it today? It's the 22nd of June today. So I'm obviously way behind and I'm gonna film these back to back, edit them back to back, let's get it out. I need to get ahead of myself. It's Henley next week. Hen I'm on the start line this time next week today. So training camp. So with the news of second A, I did not expect to be in this territory this year. I need a bit of needed a bit of a reshuffle in my. I was thinking about it all the time. <laughs> I needed a bit of a reshuffle in my mind. You know what was my next goal, and I hit all mine for this year, next year. I need to reset it because I like to feel orient oriented. So how did camp go? So f I just had two days in Porto. That was really nice. <laughs> First day I enjoyed by myself. I was editing the very first vlog there, quite a bit. I got through it. And then the second day, some of the gappies joined me. I read the paper in bed. Here he is. And in the personal columns, there was this letter I read. If you like pina coladas and getting caught in the rain. We had a good time going around Porto. We went to one of the rowing clubs there. Literally look, it's like built into a, into a, like a, a rock face. It's a bit like the, the bat, the Batman home, Batman cave, the bat cave. Met the rest of the squad at Porto airport. And then it was time to go to, uh, and where was it? Silac. Time to go to Surlac in Spain. But yeah, I what's the word? I don't know where to go from this point. Do I just show like a cool montage of camp? Could do that. Could do that. Yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> okay. 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 Armada, our queen does love ships. It was a really good buzz for camp. It was, uh, it was just really exciting to get away. Good weather, whole, whole squad. It's like over a hundred athletes. It was really good fun. Anyway, we get there. The first day the boats aren't there, so we get on the Erg. So nice. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Describe Henry, your Henry. Sunday. Yeah, you are, are you ideal Sunday? Go. Oh, what are you guys talking about? We were talking about oh, the fact oh, that oh, about the virus right now. has grown. Ooh. It's really hot in the room. Like my electrolyte balance is a bit out of whack. Maybe I'm dehydrated. Get on the erg. And I feel my hamstring. It's sore after <laughs> doing the 10K. And then the next day we've got pieces. It's actually match dates. We were in match dates at this point. Two top eights. Um, and I was in one of the top eights. Uh, we go out for like a 16K paddle in the morning on the lake. It's really nice. It's insane being in such a fast boat now for me. Mm. 
but it was fast. It was very fast. I can feel that hamstring though, what I did the day before. And then the afternoon, we have, we have pieces, which was three 1500s against the other top eight. So match dates, two eights go alongside each other. After it, I'm like, okay, this hamstring's pretty cooked. Like it needs rest. I should say, actually, this is an injury that I've been nursing since this, before December, yeah, December time, but I'd pushed it too hard on camp. Came off the water, we had telemetry rigged up, and it turns out I've done really good warts over these few pieces. Whilst I just got into the top 16, based off my performance, it was a really good chance that I was gonna stay in that top 16, which is what my coach said. Which is crazy, because I felt like I shouldn't have been there in the first place. So I'd gone from, like just the ascent of going, going through all these boats, I thought I was gonna be in and out of the top 16 because there were various injuries as well going on with other athletes. I was told, sort your injury out, make sure you get fit because I'm probably gonna be, probably gonna stay in the top 16. I spent two days out, like resting it. And again, this is an injury I had been managing. I thought I'd pushed it too far, possibly <laughs> to the point of no return. I thought I was gonna be out for a while. But um, after two days rest, I chilled for a bit. I did some filming for the rest of the squad, got some cool footage. But then after those two days, it was, I was back in action. It looked like the, the, the selection for Henley was firming up. Bearing in mind selection was like an integral part of camp. That was really interesting to see selection done in a massive squad. Pretty heartbreaking for some people, which is quite tough to watch. <laughs> We had a bit more direction throughout the whole squad then and from, from there on it was just about enjoying ourselves and getting to know these new crews. We got I got put in a in a four plus in a Cox four. It was a completely new combination. We came back from camp. It was really successful. It was a really good time. It was really intense. We then came back, we stayed in these boats. We had Met Regatta right around the corner as soon as we came back. And is this a good place to leave it? It probably is. Then we had an official squad meeting, whatever you want to call it. Our coaches were going to read out the names, the selection for Henley. Where's the big Tom Hollywood? We've been training fucking hard and everybody's been fighting really hard for their seats and trying to get in the best role possible. Marit A, Zoe, and Ratti, Gerd, Benjamin, uh, and McCormerson. And I'd made it. I was in the top 16. I was going to be in the Cox 4 for Henley. Tanya Challenge Cup. That's a good vote to be in. <laughs> Did not expect to see myself here. Not this year, anyway. It's kind of funny at the same time. Is it though, mate? It's kind of funny in the, in the way that it's just like, I'm just like suffering. <laughs>
Foodie, say hi. Foodie, say hi. Foodie, say hi. Foodie, can I have ice cream? Foodie, say hi. Say hi. Hi.